Good. So I think uh, we are almost set. Yeah, just call people to uh, to join. I'm sure you have friends and and family members. Uh, call them to join the program. Uh, as usual, someone's life will, will never remain the same. Good, so I think we are set now, let's pray. We pray to God in the name of Jesus to bless all of us tonight on this platform. As we look at how, why people do struggle to marry and how, why people struggle to enjoy their marriage life and what can be done. Father, we pray, speak through me to your people and let that which will come out from my mouth be inspired by your Holy Spirit. For your word is life. So let these words give life to all those who will listen, to settle down nicely to your glory and to enjoy the union of marriage that you have given them. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Good. So we welcome ourselves to the program. Uh, today we shall be continuing with what we started last week Thursday, struggling to marry or struggling to enjoy your marriage life, what can be done biblically? And last week we posed this question that what is your situation? Are you struggling to marry or to enjoy your family life? And uh, we, 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 uh, we had that discussion. We mentioned a few things last week, uh, why some people do struggle to settle down and why some people are not also really enjoying their, their union of marriage. We mentioned character. They don't have the godly character. If you don't have the godly character, sometimes you can attract a man or a woman, but you won't be able to keep it. Or you can even be married to someone, but your character will disturb the union. We also mentioned your past life that sometimes if you've had abusive past or if you, you have been a bad person in the past and and also sometimes if you have you had something with people yes. you revert sometimes to, yeah, that can also pose a problem. We also mentioned that some people do not know how to love. And we said that in every human institution, love is key. And if you don't know how to love, then uh, it would be a struggle to to uh, keep your union or to settle down. And we also mentioned spiritual problem like Mary Magdalene, whom seven demons came out and through Christ, our Lord healed her. So if you have impure spirits in your life or in your body, I would say from John 10, 10 B that Satan, he, he, his, his mission is to destroy and to steal and to kill. And so if you have impure spirit, you have spirits, they represent Satan in, in, in this world, in people's life. So if you have them in your life or in your body, then they will drive away, they will destroy every good thing in your life. And uh, we also look at how do people get into your spirits in them. We, we, we mentioned the fact that if you are an idol worshiper, you are likely to have impure spirits in your life. Or if you practice any of the forbidden practices, sorcery, witchcrafting, uh, witchcrafting uh, divination, talking to spirits and dead people, or if you are just a bad person, you are likely to have impure spirits following uh, you. And today we shall be continuing by looking at uh, three more or four more things that I'm sure will enlighten all of us uh, as to what to do to overcome this very struggle. And I'll continue by saying that what makes marriage worthwhile what makes what gives it value and importance and, and what makes it valuable and good and successful is the blessings of God's kingdom. It's God blessing. The reason is that marriage is a gift from God. Don't forget, we are looking at this subject from biblical viewpoint. So people in the secular world and, and other, other quarters may have a different views, but uh, we are looking at it from purely biblical viewpoint. And we know from scripture that God gave us marriage. God gave humanity marriage. And so we cannot enjoy that gift without the gift giver. People make this mistake. 
Sometimes they think they can just get a man or a woman and marry and they start having good time. It's not true. Uh, it, it cannot, we, we know. So, so, so it's, it's not just a matter of food and drink, meaning money, or uh, the av availability of resources, but peace, which is a product of God's kingdom, joy and righteousness. Without these three and other kingdom blessings, people cannot have good time. I mean, they may dream, but they cannot have good time in their relationships and marriage. And because marriage itself is that of God. So, so God has to bless it, right? So peace, joy, and righteousness must be featured in every union, every marriage. And, and, and this cannot be obtained from anywhere else except God. Okay, so uh, Saint Paul was telling the people that the kingdom of God is not a matter of food and drink, but of peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. And these are some of the virtues that are, are, are lacking or are missing. And, and my brothers and sisters, these can only come from God, the creator of the universe. And so uh, uh, today we shall be looking at how uh, curses, misfortunes, sometimes can also deprive us and what can be done because there are some blessings that are, are passed on from one generation to the next. And so there are some misfortunes that are passed on from one generation to the next. And so uh, if you are not lucky, we shall look at uh, this cl classic example, Adam and Eve, when they sin, they pass on that sin to us. And many people have tried to come out of that through faith in Jesus Christ. And so in your family, uh, you know, same principle uh, works in the, that, that if there's a misfortune, you can inherit that. Uh, but we shall come to that. And we shall also look at lack of uh, proper upbringing or grooming to become a wife or a husband. You, you, you might be properly groomed to become, if not. We will look at e Esther, how that godly man, Mordecai, helped her to become a wonderful wife to the king. And later how God used her to save people because she was properly brought up, see what I mean, uh, to be a wife. In the same way, men ought to be properly brought up to be husbands. If not, they cannot really take care of the woman. And so uh, let's read uh, the word of God to guide our discussion. Psalm 35, verse 25. Uh, this is what David said, Psalm uh, 25. 35 verse 25, sorry, Psalm 37 verse 25 says that I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be a blessing. Then he encourages them, turn from evil and do good, then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves just and will not forsake his faithful ones wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. The offspring of the wicked will perish. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. So as we said, that if your mom, dad, auntie, uncle, grandpa, if they were wicked people, you are their offspring. And if you are not in Christ and you are not pursuing righteousness, there is no hope in terms of the blessings that God has given to humanity. You may have food to eat and, and, and basic life necessities, air to breathe and survive and, and, to, and to maybe get a man or a woman back to enjoy uh, the blessings of God, uh, you won't. And so uh, some of these uh, discussions are very important in the public domain uh, for the reasons that we shall be looking at. Let's also look at Ecclesiastes chapter two, verse 24 to 26. And here we, we are just encouraging ourselves to pursue righteousness and God and, and whatever the issue may be, whatever the issue may be, God knows and he will restore and put things right. And many men and women have experienced God's grace because they pursued God, they pursued righteousness, the giver of relationship and marriage. Even to love someone, again, it's a gift from God. Ecclesiastes 2, 24 to 26, it says a person can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in their toil. This too, I see, is from the hand of God. For without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? Without him, you can't find enjoyment in your marriage. Without him, you can't find enjoyment in life. True enjoyment is not just drinking or going to pop or having a good meal. That is just something uh, temporary. It won't, it won't touch the human soul. The true enjoyment is a gift from God. 
So people don't have joy in their heart. And so they pursue all kinds of things or they replace or they fill their empty life with other activities. No, verse 26 says, to the person who pleases God, he gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the tax of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless in chasing uh, after the wind. And so if you please God, so our, our focus, in addition to all the reasons to be mentioned, is to pursue God, pursue righteousness. And God himself who gives life and all other good things, James 1.17, good things, they come from him. God himself, he knows how to sort things up and to restore and to make you new and to, and to put that joy in your heart. Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, verse 9, also uh, tells us something along this very line, Ecclesiastes chapter three, sorry, verse seven, yeah, verse nine, says, what do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for a person than to be happy and to do good while they live that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken out of it. God does it so that people will fear him. And so, so the, the temptation to use your own strength is very strong. So you think you can do it by yourself. You have the plans and that. But from what we, we read, the Bible says that God has put that burden upon human race. We struggle without him, without his favor, his knowledge, his wisdom, you know, all our toil will be. And so, and so, and, and so pursuing God and righteousness will, will now teach you a lot of things on, uh, on how to live practically and some of the things that you need to do and also things that you need to uh, avoid. And so, yeah, uh, uh, this text will guide our conversation tonight. And so uh, we shall look at, uh, in some cases, a uh, generational thing or curse or misfortune can also make uh, life difficult. Uh, some people, it, it, it does to do with the money. They struggle to have money, even to eat. Some people, too, they have other means to get money, although unorthodox. They struggle to settle down or to enjoy union, or some people to good health, and so, and so, and so the manifestation of uh, generational curse through Adam, you know, is seen in almost everyone's life, but 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 differently, right? So so some blessings are passed on from one generation to the next. That is how God designed the world. Right? So people must understand this, and that is why sometimes you look like your mom or you look like your dad or you see yourself doing something that mom or dad likes. So, 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 so that's how God made the world. And, and, and when people don't really want to understand things from God's viewpoint, they, 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 uh, they miss out on, on, on some of these uh, things. Uh, so in the same way, some ad adversities, uh, misfortunes are also passed on from, from one generation to the next, from mom to the children, from dad to the children, from grandparents to the children and then the children's children. And so sometimes you have a situation where in your family, so, so in our context, in your family, marriage is a struggle. So you see your aunties, your uncles, your siblings, grandparents, you know, and, and, then, and then you see the same misfortune, you know, visiting you. But sometimes uh, it's not by accident that it is designed. That is how the world. Uh, is made by God. So sometimes when we say God is the creator of the world, the universe is not that we want just to make that claim, but then the implication of that, of that claim or statement is that we should look to him, we should ask him how we should live in this world. How did, how did he design the world? You know, we should ask these questions and, and then he'll help us to really. Uh, the book of Romans 5, verse 12, uh, says this, the book of Romans 5. I think you can join me. Let's do some readings. Uh, the book of uh, Romans 5, 
verse 12 says that, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all people because all sin. So sin entered the human race through Adam and Eve, and we inherited that, that misfortune, that curse of sin. Okay, and if you jump to verse, uh, uh, verse 17, it says, for if the trespass by one man, of the one man that reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So through Adam, we inherited misfortunes and curses. And now through Christ, we can receive forgiveness and eternal life. So, so, so those who come to Christ. And so that's why our opening scripture, uh, uh, Psalm 37, uh, uh, David was saying that I've never seen the righteous man's son begging for, for bread because the righteous man's son or daughter will inherit righteousness from the parent. But then the condition there is that if that child continues to love God. And so, and so let's also uh, 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 try to understand things like this, that, that, that generational curses or things that are passed on can also, if, if we don't come to the Lord and, and, and change, right? So it's not just pray to God, but you must change. You don't have to do what your ancestors used to do. So all of us, our ancestor is Adam. If we all continue in the, in the life of Adam, meaning rebelling against God, then we also inherit that. And when we follow Christ who obeyed God, the Father, then we inherit that. And so if you, if, if you bring it to your family level, maybe mom and dad or grandparents level, to come to the Lord means that you are, you are stop the life that they were living if that wasn't good. And then you embrace the life of righteousness. And then you be entitled uh, to some of these blessings that God uh, gives us. So, so those who follow Christ, not Adam, receive forgiveness. They are redeemed from sin. But in the same way, the descendant of those who hate God, they suffer. But the descendant of those who love God enjoy the blessings of God. So, so God told his people in the Old Testament this. He explained to them clearly, look, my people, this is how I've made the world, right? And so instead of chasing that man or that woman or being worried about that person, chase God, chase God. And God will make that union successful. Sometimes I know as a pastor, people spend a lot of time praying to God, Lord, change my husband. That's a good thing, but pursue God yourself so that the blessings will trickle and that will touch your man or your woman as well. That is the way for When Abraham was okay, it affected Sarah and then Isaac, although Hagar had opportunity, but her own character and her own upbringing did not help her. So, so, so she missed out on that. Let's read Exodus 24 to 6. God had to explain some of these things to his people clearly so that his people will know how to live. And, 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 and it's a problem that, that a lot of people don't really understand some of these things. So, uh, so they think life is just there. No. God designed the world just as someone designed your phone with some fun functionality and, and, and then and then all that and so yeah let's read exodus so what we are doing is, is try to help you understand uh in the context of what we are discussing some things so that when you are pursuing god when you are pursuing righteousness it makes sense because that is the ultimate solution uh, that 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 countless of men and women have found comfort from so uh, we read exodus 24 to 6 and god had to uh, how they call it, I remind his people this, that, 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 that they must make sure. So yes, you are welcome, uh, Elin. Uh, yes, Elin, welcome. If you can mute your, your microphone for us, that would be very good. Thank you very much. And you are welcome. Uh, so we, we continue. Yeah, we read from Exodus 24 to 6. So God was telling the people that you, uh, uh, that you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth, beneath or in the waters uh, below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. So God told the people that, that I, I punish the sins 
of mom and dad to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. So those who are not worshipers of God and worship idols and do all kinds of things, they hate God. They hate God. They don't go to church. They don't pray. God is God, God means nothing to them. They don't love God. I know some would tell me that I love God in my heart, but love must be expressed. And so God is saying that if, 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 if you hate me, then that, that, that misfortune, that curse will come upon you and your children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate you. Then verse six says, by showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. So thousand generations. So right from the days of Adam, <clears throat> any man, any woman who loved the Lord, the Lord says, I will also show love to you. Yeah, I will show love to you. And so from what we said, it's very clear that the way forward, among other things, is to just pursue God. Yeah, if you pursue God, yeah, that's it. Uh, you, you, you'll get it. Okay, so, so this understanding, I think, is very crucial so that you, you can search for God. And those who have been joining that series uh, we are doing from the book of Ruth, when Ruth confessed that the God of, 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 of Naomi will be her God and her people will be her people, uh, we all know what happened and how God changed her destiny, right? And, and, and the same all can also uh, be said of you. But, but the understanding is key. The understanding is key. So we say that. And so if your forefathers were not worshippers of God and, and also and, and you, you also continue in that tradition, then according to what we read, God's word, uh, you will suffer, you know, that faith. And so sometimes you have a situation in your family where, where in your family there is struggle when it comes to marriage and aunties and uncles, siblings, and everyone is really struggling to keep a relationship. They are struggling. Yes, if you don't come out, and, and, and serve the Lord and give your life to God and be born again to have your name written in heaven, then you also be, be visited with that same misfortune. But as we, we study, we look at this word, I pray that that would never be your portion, but that the Lord will take you out, will single you out because you have decided to serve him. Our main point is very simple. Yeah, marriage is a gift from God and without the gift giver, they can never enjoy. It's, it's not true. And, and, and marriage is not just about having money and houses and cars. Sometimes they mean nothing. What you need is peace and joy and righteousness. You know, that's what you need. If not, the money and the food and the cars, they'll mean nothing to you. They mean nothing. And many people are miserable in their relationship because they thought or they think that, that, that you know, if I get a good job, if I can afford good holidays and nice car and going out to eat and I will be okay. But no, what do we see now? What is lacking is the blessings of God. And men and women are not pursuing God. They are forsaking God. They don't worship God. They don't pray to God. They don't fast. They are not involved in that which God is doing. So what 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 to do biblically? Very simple, love God, pray to him, and also don't do anything bad and go to church. And, and as you do that, you see that you will, you will position yourself, you will get involved in what God is doing. And through this, your true identity there, your, your, I mean, the plan that God had for you before uh, you come into this world will come to pass, okay? Because, see, the thing is that if you are not in line with what God is doing and God blesses you, you take the blessings to the well and to spoil it. And as a matter of fact, the grace of God has come upon almost everyone. But the problem is that many people take the blessings of God and take it back to the world and to all kinds of lifestyle and the blessings are destroyed. But, but, but when you are, in God and with God and you are serving God, that whatever God gives because you are in his family uh, shall endure forever. And so uh, I keep this in mind. So grow in righteousness and be committed to God, my brothers and sisters. Uh, if you have time, just read the book of Ruth. Uh, it's only four chapters. That book is only four small chapters. You look at the book of Ruth. Uh, Ruth was a Moabite, a worshiper of idol. And then later when she accepted the Lord and started following God and all that God restored her and, and her life changed. Uh, she became one of the grandmothers of Jesus Christ because when she accepted the Lord, she, she now joined the family of God. And so, and so then she was entitled to, to all the blessings 
uh, that were uh, uh, in God's kingdom. So, so, so focus on God. See, life is not just about food and drink, mm -hmm. but what you truly need is peace and joy and righteousness. When you have this, you are okay. When, when you have righteousness in your marriage, your partner will not cheat on you. Your, part, your partner will respect you, will treat you well because that man, that woman is right with God. And if a man or a woman is not right with God, then that person can never be right with you because he or she may not, have, may not have what it takes to be that. And that is the problem we have in the world. We lack peace. We lack joy. We lack righteousness. We can talk about justice, how we relate to one another. And without God, it's impossible to have these virtues. And you need this in your marriage, in your own heart, in the workplace, everywhere in the world. So true, what makes marriage worthwhile is the blessings of God's kingdom. You cannot enjoy the marriage without the, uh, the I mean, the gift giver. It's, 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 not, it's not just possible. So, so as you pursue God, as you give your life to Christ through this, you, before you realize you are in line with God's plan, his will for your life, like Mary, for example, God brought Mary, the mother of Jesus, to give birth to Christ, for Christ to be the savior of the world. And Mary, the Bible says, was a godly woman. And Joseph was a godly man for that very purpose. So it was very easy for God to put them together and bless the union. And, 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 and a lot of people don't really want to live for God. So if God gives you peace and joy, what will be the product? Are you going to take the marriage back to the world and to spoil it or what? And so come to God and pursue God, make God. But Jesus tells us, he seek the kingdom of God first. And other things shall be added, okay? Other things that perhaps you are lacking. It's very easy to also say that the other people who don't go to church, they don't watch God, but they are doing okay, my brother, my sister. If they tell you what they are going through, you run away. So, so on social media, they may post things, they may say things, but you don't know their struggles that they are going through. They lack peace, joy, and righteousness. There is no way you can have true peace, joy, and righteousness without God. And that these are the things that we need as well. So we'll be talking about the, the generational thing, curse, misfortunes, that some blessings are passed on from one generation to another, some from some also misfortunes from one generation to another. If you are a mom and you love your children, make sure you are godly and pass that on to them. If you're that and you love your children, make sure you are godly and pass that on to them. If not, you see your children going through what you've been through. And this, this is there, we are learning, I see, I see I see the grandmother going through, I see the mother going through, I see the daughter going through, and even the granddaughter going through. The same thing, the same thing. Unless someone dedicates his or her life to break that. That is how God made the world. If your family has any good virtue, you inherit it, bad virtue, better head, but you can, as you come to Christ, be a new epoch, a new family line. As you love, pursue God. Don't exchange, chase, chase problem and solutions. The solutions is in the hands of the Almighty God. Pursue God. Your life will never be the same. You be God will turn things around. Okay, good. So we've mentioned that. Let's look at the next one that makes people struggle either to marry or to, to enjoy their union of marriage. The next one we'll talk about is lack of upbringing or grooming to become a wife or a husband. Now, if you are not groomed properly to become a man who can take care of a woman, the woman will struggle because you wouldn't have what it takes to, to really be that man or that woman to help the union. I'll, 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 let's mention the life of uh, Queen Vashti and how she was removed from the queenship because she lacked she lacked a uh, proper character. And then how Esther was favored because Esther was fortunate to, to have uh, her cousin, a godly man called Mordecai, who groomed Esther. So Esther was 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 was, was you know are giving to the king and the king was very pleased with her. And, and it didn't end there. See, when God bless you with the union of marriage, he has a purpose. So through Esther, God's people were saved when Haman wanted to destroy them. 
So if you just want to get married and just enjoy the marriage and travel around and just you know go to the movies and all parties and that, you will, you will not get the peace, the joy that you need because that, that, that wasn't the reason why God gave you the union. God gave you that marriage to save people, to save a generation, to help humanity. That is right. If you get this right, you'll be okay. I've, I've blessed many dozens of marriages. And sometimes I, I, I just try to understand what is going on. And those who live for the, for the kingdom, for God, God finds them useful. And those who don't, they, they, are, they have all kinds of problems and issues. And, and rightly so. Why do you think God gave us Jesus Christ? So that we can have eternal life and be a blessing to humanity. Why do you think God will give you that man or that woman? It's a very, if you get this right, and you dedicate your life and your union and your children to God, God will find that family useful to bless humanity. So we mentioned Mary and Joseph and how God through them brought Christ to the world to die for our sins. And your marriage can also be a blessing too. So, so Queen Vashti was very rude. Exeter 1, 9 to 12, let's read uh, a bit of that account. And so she was disposed of. Uh, the book of Exeter uh, 1, uh, the book of Exeter 1, let me get it, yeah, 9 to 12. It, it's very simple, my sister. It says, Queen Vashti, I'm reading from the book of Exeter chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 9. I'm reading from the book of Esther, uh, Esther Chapter one, verse nine. Queen Vashti also gave a banquet for the women in the royal palace of King Zizek. So there was a great festival. The king gave a great banquet. And then the queen also gave a great banquet. Verse 10, on, this, on the seventh day, King Zizek was high in spirits from wine. He commanded the seven eunuchs who served him, Mehuman, Bista, Habona, a, a big, big thar, Abata, Zita, and Karkas, 11, to bring before him Queen Vashti wearing her royal crown in order to display her beauty to the people and nobles, for she was lovely to look at. Vashti was beautiful. And the king said, please, my wife, come and say hello to my guests. And let me introduce you to my guests because I'm very proud of you. That's what happened, but they saw it. But when the attendant delivered the, the king's command, Queen Vashti refused to come. Then the king became furious and burned with anger. And if you continue the rest of the story, what happened was that then King uh, Vashti was kicked out, was, de was uh, deposed from the, from the queenship. And then they found a girl called Esther. Our point here is that when you are properly grown with good manners and all that, you know, you become useful in your marriage and in God's kingdom. If you're a man and you're not properly groomed and you don't know how to treat a woman, you know, you will abuse here yeah, and God cannot use that marriage, you know, for his glory. Or if you're a woman like we read uh, about Vashti and, and you are that very rude and unkind, and you no, know, God cannot. And, and whatever God does, he does that because he has a purpose. And so Vashti could not, could not be a blessing to humanity at all. When we read the whole of chapter one, oh yes, that, I mean, the king said, let's find another woman to be a queen. And Vashti, and sorry, Esther was the one uh, that the king finally settled on. Why? Because, as we shall see, Esther was lucky to have, uh, I mean, her cousin called Mordecai. And Mordecai uh, uh, understood God's word, the importance of preparing a man or a woman for marriage. So he groomed uh, Esther so well that when Esther had the opportunity to marry the king, the king was so pleased with Esther, okay? See that, see that. So, so, so sometimes it's not just getting the man or the woman. Is, is that person pleased with you? That's a question. How have you groomed yourself to be godly? I know people will say, oh, if you love me, take me the way I am. Truly so, but hey, if, if, if it's not that God cannot take us the way we are unless we change, if not, then everyone will go to heaven. But unless we are born again, God will not allow us into his kingdom. 
So true, the man will take you the way you are. The man will take you the way, but you'll be a thorn in that man's flesh. And God cannot be glorified in that. Right. So it's not just going out to get a man and woman and for the priest to bless, but, 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 but that is groom yourself, pray yourself. And Esther, so let's read Esther 2 verse 7. And, and I talks about how Mordecai helped this young woman. And then it says it. Verse 7 says that Mordecai had a cousin. I'm reading from Esther chapter 2, verse 7. Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, uh, that's Esther, whom he had brought up because she had neither father nor mother. Uh, Esther was a widow, uh, sorry, Esther was an orphan. And so she, she had no one, but luckily her cousin was there to help. This young woman, who was also known as Esther, had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when her father and mother died. So, so when you continue with the story, Mordecai provided the needed uh, grooming training for Esther to become a woman. These days, our problem is that we just focus on career. Let me go to uni and get good grace and get a good job and get, and get a lot of money. And that's it. We, we neglect to be trained properly. And so you have a good job, you're earning good money, but no woman wants to say yes to you in marriage. Why? The character is not there. You, you, the work that you are doing, you've been trained. But why do you want to marry without grooming? And then, and then we see the woman the same thing. A man may come for you because you are beautiful, you have nice figure, nice color, everything, but hey, he go out with you for a man or two. And if you ask for marriage, those days, women don't even ask for marriage. Men will ask for marriage. And, and you'll be there for days and months. He will not ask for marriage because in his head, he's saying, mm, I don't want to take this thing home to be my wife, the mother of my kids. Even if you give birth you know, for, for him, still, he will struggle to take you home as a wife. The problem as we talk to the man is, is the character. And the problem as we talk to the woman is character. And, and the problem, and, and the issue is simple because we are not grouped brothers and sisters. Talk to old ladies, if you're a woman, what it means to be a woman and a wife and that. If you're a man, talk to an old uh, people who are experienced, who are godly, who, who have made it. Don't talk to people who have messed their lives up and then they are telling you I'm learning from experience. They, they don't know anything. Tell people who have disciplined themselves and dealt and have made it. And you see the difference and Mordecai, it's just godly, man. And we have godly people around. I mean, this program, we've set it up. If you need counseling and all that, we'll be doing this for people for two years. We'll be counseling people before they get married for 18 months, some for three years. Yes, every month. Yes, we'll meet with you once for an hour or two that will take you through. And if you can have this in your church, that is good. If you can have this also from somewhere, that is also very good. But, but the important thing is that as singles, if you really want to, Suffer. It's not just enough. So some of you will testify that yes, you come across guys and ladies, but hey, it's really tough for them to say because they are not convinced. Esther was very fortunate to have this great man called Mordecai, and the marriage to the king was not just for fun. Esther was blessed with all the riches of that kingdom, the kingdom of Zezu. But that marriage wasn't fine because God has a purpose. And God now used Esther to save his people whom Haman wanted to destroy, right? And so we can talk about Esther. We can talk about Mordecai. We can talk about Mary and Joseph. Are you planning to marry so that your marriage will be a blessing to God and humanity? If the answer is yes, and those of you who come to church on Sunday will look at uh, the life of Boaz. The reason why Boaz wanted to marry Ruth was, was so that Ruth, uh, a, a diseased husband, you know, Ruth lost the husband, will, have, will not have his name perish from the service of the earth. That was the intention. Because according to God's law, that if someone dies, the next person should marry the wife. So that that next person will make children for that dead person. It's not for you, for God's glory. And Mordecai had that understanding. And when God saw his heart, he blessed him. 
He married Ruth. They gave birth to Obed, to Jesse, and Jesse to David. And now Jesus came from the line of David. Keep this in mind. We are looking at how to overcome struggles when it comes to settling down and enjoying your marriage from biblical viewpoint. Yeah, people may have different approaches, but, but this is the deal. That your marriage, and begin to think this way, that I want to marry so that my marriage will bring glory to God. And if you want to marry so that you can chill around and show your wife, your, your, your man to your friends and to flex and to travel, my friend, you have defeated the very reason why you want to marry and God won't come in. But if you want to marry so that you stay away from sexual immorality, you have your wife, you have your husband, you know the sleeping outside marriage, you want to marry so that your kids will be godly and God can use them to bless humanity. You want to ma marry so that your marriage, you know, can be an example that a lot of people can, you know, be encouraged to also marry. You know, these godly reasons will attract the attention of heaven. Sunday, don't make service. And if you are not coming to check, try to uh, listen to that sermon on YouTube if you, uh, at Sex for Central Harvest Church. I'm sure they will upload that sermon there. And so, and so God easily blessed. I talked to a lot of singles and, and sometimes their mindset, I'm sure will not even attract God's grace. We are looking at all this so that you walk with understanding and, and live with understanding. And that should inform your decisions. And that should put you in control of what you do and what you don't do. You see, you don't have to blame people. I know people will say that, oh, is there this man doing me, there's some witches and all that. Yeah, it may be true, it's somebody. Else. But you see, the human will is more powerful than any force apart from the Holy Ghost. If you can set your heart on doing God's will and pleasing God, no demon, no wizard, no witchcraft can do you. But if you give yourself to unworldly things, and unworthy things and things that are not important. Hey, you've surrendered your, your will, your power that you have. So when we come to the Lord, we surrender our will to the great God. And say, so, Lord, let your will be our will. Change us. Queen, Va I mean, Queen Esther was blessed and the many others. And some of you on, on the platform, God is using so much. And, and there are countless of men and women God is using. The mindset must change. The mindset must change all the time. Unless I, I talk about, we just have the 10 minutes, 15 minutes to go. Lack of knowledge is also a problem. And when we talk about lack of knowledge, we are talking about lack of knowledge about God or about how God wants us to live. Of course, these days, because of social media, you get all kinds of information. And sometimes people don't even know, don't know what to do. They don't even know what, what is true and not. We have all conspiracy theories and, 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 and all that going on. When I talk about lack of knowledge uh, from the book of Hosea 4, 6, God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, lack of knowledge about God and how he wants us to live. That's a problem we have now. And so people perish. People don't even know what to do to be saved and make it to heaven. They don't know. So you go to hell if you don't listen to the gospel. People don't know how to how to marry. They, 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 they lack the knowledge. How God wants us to be. And so, or for example, if you meet someone and you're interested in the person, you know, this, oh, this little, little thing. So, so just think about this. What is it that you don't know about life, about righteousness, about family life, about finances, about your soul, about heaven, about hell? What is that you don't know? You have to know it. Read books, listen to sermons. They know from God's viewpoint, from God's viewpoint. When we read the book of uh, Matthew 7, 21, I think 24, Christ said that if you listen to my word and you put them into practice, you are like a man who built his house on a rock. The wind blew, the storms came back. That, that, that house, you know, uh, uh, I mean, we stood all that, that, that came on it. But those who will build their lives in the sun, meaning you build your life anyhow. When the storms of life come, you won't survive. And so get the right knowledge and build it. Your life is like building a house. If you build it well, it's good for yourself. If you don't build your life well, <laughs> that is your life. And how do you build your life well? Get the right knowledge. 
but that, that is your life. You have only one life. So knowledge about God, how God wants us to, my brothers and sisters, uh, is very important. And lack of that, you make mistakes. You make mistakes. You lose that man. You lose that woman. You lose that relationship. Only to start all over again. And, and again, you lose because you lack. Read the Bible. Ask serious questions. Talk to good people who are knowledgeable about life and the things of God. Don't deny yourself of that. If you need financial advice, go to the financial gurus. They know the system of the world. But if you have, if you want life, righteousness, and eternal life, and that which God wants us to have, and God has given us His Bible, His Word, read it. Your life will never be there. And and be in control. You you have the knowledge how to marry, how to raise your kids up, how to relate to your husband, how to relate to your wife, and all that. You're in control. The confusion will be over. Uh, does curse work? You know, curse, C-U-R-S-E. Does it work? Is it anything like curse? Yes, there, there's something like curse. Is that, uh, someone can curse you. So let's look at it. God is a revealer of secrets. Deuteronomy 29, now says, the secret things belongs to God, but the things he has revealed unto us, they are for ourselves and our children so that we may obey the word of the Lord and live. So God reveals secret things as you draw closer. Your situation may be unique that, that I've not even mentioned or touched on your situation. But when you draw closer to God, God reveals and, and shows the way. I think one of the benefits of drawing closer to God is to benefit from, is to, is to, is to get some of these things. So yes, curse, they do work. And, and sometimes there may be hidden reasons why certain things don't really work in your life. There may be hidden things. Draw closer to God, God will show you. And a typical example is how Joshua cursed Jericho and pronounced a curse against that city. That's what Jacob, uh, Joshua did. He cursed that city. And he said that whoever will build that city can only do so at the cost of his firstborn and his lastborn. So he put a curse upon the city. You know, uh, Jericho was raised down by uh, Joshua and the Israelites, and then they, they, they now enter into their promised land. And, and when that campaign was over, he put a solemn curse on that city, whoever will build it. And let's read the book of, uh, uh, the, the book of, let me see if I have it. Yeah, Joshua 6.26. Open your Bibles. Let's read the book of Joshua 6.26. To understand some of the things we are saying, so yeah, curses do do do. It, it, they are there. Don't don't dismiss them. We are reading from the book of uh, uh, Joshua twenty six, six twenty six. Sorry, uh, let's bring this one up. So Joshua, let me get it up. Six twenty six, and how he cursed that city. And later on, a great man who wanted favor from, from his commander built that city, but he sacrificed his sons. In other words, he used his sons to redeem that curse. So Joshua 6, 26 says, at that time, Joshua pronounced this solemn oath. Curse before the Lord is the one who, who undertake to build this city, Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, he will lay its foundations. And at the cost of his youngest son, he will set up its gate. So the Lord was with Joshua and his fame spread throughout the land. Now, now some people don't really believe that, 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 that people can curse. And that, that, that it can work. But let's read the book of uh, the book of First Kings, and you see that it worked. First Kings 1634. If you have a Bible with me, let's read it. First Kings 1634. And the, and the priests were very gracious, 1634, to write all this down for us. 1634. So it reads, First Kings 16, 34, in Ahab's time, hail 
of Bethel rebuilt Jericho. He laid its foundation at the cost of his firstborn son, Abiram, and he set up its gates at the cost of his youngest son, Segu, in accordance with the word of the Lord spoken by Joshua, the son of Nun. You see, so this man, in order to please his, his, his boss, Cain Ahab, said, I will build Jericho. Because Ahab said, whoever will build Jericho, you become the, the commander of the... The, the commander of the army and and persons people will do anything everything for power money and fame they can sacrifice their own children so this man knew he knew that now if i build jericho it's going to be at the cost of my two children he did that now someone asked what happened to the children when you read other commentaries the common interpretation is that the two children the moment he started building Jer uh, jericho he encountered problems, problems of the problem. And he was told that unless you sacrifice your, your son, that city cannot be built. So he did that. And the moment he sacrificed his son, he started building the city and it was going smoothly. Now what happened to the son? The son started getting sick and ill and here and there and eventually he died, sacrifice. So this son, of course, had no chance to marry. Now, when he had finished building the city, he had to uh, erect the gate. And he was told, unless you, of course, he, I mean, they practice sorcery and divination. So they were told, unless you sacrifice your son. So then the son started getting sick and sick and started misbehaving, becoming useless. So it was a sign that he was being used as a sacrifice. And so then the son's soul was sacrificed to whatever gods, idols. And this man held, built the, 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 the city gate. And so he was promoted by the king, Kineha. You see, people would do all kinds of things for power, fame, and money. So these cursed things, they work, brothers. It's, 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 not, it's not just I believe or I don't believe. They are there. But the question is always, how do you live so that no one can, or maybe coming from your family line, or, or even, even, even friends and, and, and bad people, you know, you know, I mean, can just put, I mean, those who practice witchcraft, they can come together and then say, let us make sure this woman does not give birth or does not marry or this man will never be successful. And they will do everything possible that you will never become successful. And if you are not close to God, for the power of God to visit them and to rebuke them, you will see that you will struggle and struggle. I was listening to this testimony years ago about the lady who said, in her camp, in her witchcraft camp, if they want to harm someone as a businessman, all they do is to plant one of their girls to get closer to, to the businessman. And so the businessman will start seeing this girl almost every day and eventually you propose to her. And once you do something, that's the end of your business. And so, but if you are close to God, yeah, God will tell you, if you are married, don't look at any other woman. And so you save yourself. They may plan, but it will not work. You may not know. But, 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 but the virtue of how you are living, it, it won't have, God will not even allow you. Yes, but if you, if you don't draw closer to God and to pursue righteousness, then the enemy can set traps, can set traps and to get you. When we read Joshua, because of how the city was fortified, Jericho uh, said, whoever will build the city will struggle a lot. And then, and then, and then that thing happened to us. So, so, so this case, my brothers and sisters, try, let's try to understand life the way God sees it. You will not be in darkness, right? And so, yes, and that happened. And, and then it's almost uh, nine o'clock. Let's try to conclude. Yeah, so, so, so what do you do? What do you do? What can be done? Pursue God, pursue righteousness, give your life to Jesus. And Christ will cancel every debt against you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, meaning that there will be weapons forming against you. Friends, colleagues, ordinary people, family members, you don't know, past relationships, but they will fashion. But God said, I will rescue you. And we have wonderful, when you go home, read the book of Ruth, the book of Esther, and see how this. People and even the life of Mary and Joseph, 
and how their lives were transformed. Struggling to marry or struggling to enjoy your marriage, what can be done biblically? In a nutshell, pursue God. Give your life to God. Let Jesus be your Lord and Savior. Be baptized. Live a holy life and live and tell God the Lord, if you give me my own family, give me my own husband, my own my wife, our, 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 our children, the union will live, will be for your glory and for the betterment of humanity. Throw away all those fantasies that I want to get a man and I'm going to have a wonderful wedding. You will enjoy it. There are many people that had awesome weddings, but some within six months, some one year, it never lasted because that union had nothing to do with God's glory. Yes, there are people, they want a man or a woman just to satisfy themselves. Go beyond that. Go beyond that. Go beyond that. And know that God, who, who gives us all good things, wants to use you for his glory. You see, everything in this world has a purpose. So what is the purpose of your marriage? Meditate upon this. And I'm sure as you do, the great God will never leave you, will never forsake. If you have any question, you can just ask question in the in, in in the chat session, I'll be happy to, to, to address it. Or maybe after this program offline, uh, you, can, you can get in touch and, and I'll be happy to, to, to discuss this thing with you. And then, and then be willing to change, to be a good person, change, change. I think uh, last week we, uh, we looked at how impure spirit affects our relationship just a few minutes ago. And then, and then we said that one of the ways is, 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 is just to live a holy life. Because you see, those impure spirits in your life, or in your body, they are responsible for certain habits, right? So if you like, for example, drinking, there's always an impure spirit responsible for that. So if you want to get rid of that, stop drinking. That's where they'll go. And as long as that impure spirit is there, it's not just the drinking that, you know, will, that spirit will foster, but that it will affect other aspects of your life. Your money, a woman coming close to you will not, you know, find you appealing or a man coming close to you will not find you up. And so you have all these issues in your life, but when you repent and live a holy life, God collects all of these things. And then you'll be free. And then you start praying to God, going to church, serving God, being faithful, winning souls, and see what the Lord will do in your life. You see. And those who are married and they are so struggling not to enjoy, the marriage is not for your private thing. The marriage is for God's kingdom. Mary and Jesus marriage through them Christ came to save us. And what, what, what is God, what can God do with your marriage? That's a question. And, and when you allow yourself like Mary and Joseph and Abraham and Jacob and all the great men we have now in our world in, 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 the, in, the, in the Bible, you see great change. So I pray that God will help you to overcome the struggle that you have to marry. All those who have married, the Lord God will teach you how to live to enjoy your union. And very soon we look forward, uh, that those of you who are single, we look forward to blessing your marriage very soon. I pray that the Lord will bring that good man, that good man into your life. Mm -hmm. I, I also pray that those who are married, the peace of God, the joy of God, the righteousness of, of God will be in your union and that your marriage will be a blessing to God and to humanity and your friends and family members. Live for something, live for God. So far, we've not received any, any question. So the assumption is that everything is clear. So yes, I think we spent almost one hour. So we shall bring our discussion to a close. Next week, we shall meet the same time, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, we are doing this to encourage people to settle down and to give them all the support that they need to settle down. It's part of, of one, it's one of the ministries in the church. That, that we think, and, and in the past we've, we've done it, we, we've helped a lot of people, more than I think uh, 13, 14 people to settle down within a space of uh, I think two and a half years. And because of COVID we stopped and this year we really want to bring it back. So I pray that you will receive your, your, your blessings from the Lord in the name of Jesus we have prayed. So may the Lord be with you. May the Lord strengthen you. Let us pray. I put the blessings of God upon you and all who listen to this broadcast that may the Lord grant you your heart desires. May you also be willing to live for God, give your life to the Lord, and that make sure your life is a blessing to God's kingdom and humanity. I'll leave you with God's blessings. Peace, shalom. I shall see you again 
next week, uh, Thursday, 8 to 9 p.m. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Yeah, God bless you all. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. We we'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah, God bless you, Priscilla, Johnny, and Peter. Uh, Peter Dummy, Pete Dummy. God bless you, Pete Dummy, and the many uh, who join. God willing, we shall see ourselves again. Yeah, Sharon and. and and Sydney and Steph and everyone. Yes, God bless you. Bye, bye.